I'm out here in the garden and we have found a tomato hornworm here. If you want to take a little look at how it kind of hides in there, you can see that this tomato hornworm totally stripped all of the foliage off of this one. It already ate all of those leaves. So that's how you can tell where to look for your tomato hornworms. Where you see leaves missing, there's one of these guys close. If you come out at night with the UV light, um, they also glow under the UV light. So that makes them kind of fun if you have uh, kids or grandkids coming over to help you in the garden. So I'm going to take this one off of here so we can get a better look at it. Okay, so we tend to call these tomato hornworms just out of force of habit because it was on the tomato. But this is actually a tobacco hornworm because it has a red horn on the end. Ignore my classy fingernail polish there. I'm like a second grade girl. Um, the, it also has white stripes underneath there. It's a little hard for, to see because he's covered in parasites. We're gonna talk about in a second. But when you see those straight white stripes like a cigarette, that's a tobacco hornworm. If they were a V-shaped pattern like the V in vine ripened, that would be a tomato hornworm. And tomato hornworms have a blue or a black horn on the end. But just because it's on the tomatoes doesn't mean it's a tomato hornworm. They will both, both species, eat tomatoes and potatoes and tobacco and anything in the, in the Solanace family. If you have any nightshade in your fence rows and things, they'll eat those as well. So they will also eat the fruit. Um, cool thing about the tobacco hornworm, you can hear my turkeys in the background chiming in. Cool thing about the tobacco hornworm is that when it's eating the tobacco leaves, it can store the neurotoxin nicotine. And I did say neurotoxin. Neuro is in brain and toxin is in poison. That is a, a brain poison. That's, that's not good for you. That nicotine that's in the tobacco can be stored up inside of the tobacco worm and then they can secrete it when they want to use that as a defense mechanism, which is, is kind of cool. Um, the, this one in particular is covered in all of these little things that a lot of people think are eggs, but they're not. These are actually uh, tiny little cocoons of a wasp. Um, a bra bra bracken oh, I lost it. Lost what they're called. It starts with a B. There is a wasp. I'll type it across the bottom. There is a wasp that parasitizes these guys by landing on them and laying their eggs inside of the hornworm. Now this does not, they cannot sting people. They are only attacking these guys. And you can see here's where one already fell off right there. And so these tiny little worms um, go inside of the, or their the eggs are inside of the caterpillar and they hatch out in there and they feed on him. They are eating him, but they are not killing him. They're keeping him alive as long as they can kind of like a zombie so that they can continue to feed off of him. And then when they are ready to hatch, then they will crawl through his skin, chewing their way right through the skin of the caterpillar. And they will spin this little cocoon on the outside. They spin it out of a silk, just like a spider. And those little things will live there until they are ready to come out. Now I don't see any of these open. So it looks like, yes, he's very much still alive. You see him moving. He is still alive, but he's doomed. If we plucked these all off, there's no way to save him. All of these look like they are still closed up. But I do have some others to show you. And a container down here. My friend had several at her house and they fell off through the night as I was getting here. But you can see that some of these have a little hole at the end of them. So if, uh, if the ones that are on your tomatoes, on your tomato hornworms, have a tiny little hole like, like that one right there on the end, then that one has already hatched out. Um, even though these have fallen off, you can see that these did not get very big. Those of you with tomato hornworms are like, well, those aren't very big because you're used to seeing much, much bigger ones. They can get ginormous. But, uh, but these have... Uh, have been parasitized so they didn't grow very well and and they are doomed and they are dying ah there is one of the little wasps right there see that tiny little thing that looks like a gnat one of these has hatched in our container that's very exciting just looks like a little gnat with really long antenna and they will fly around to adulthood and then they will parasitize more of these tomato hornworms so um, if you see a tomato hornworm in your garden and it's covered in these 
you might want to just leave it alone because he's not going to eat very much more before he dies. And if you let all these little wasps hatch out, then they will take care of your green tomato hornworm problem for you. Um, but the green tomato hornworm or, to or tobacco worm, uh, many people do like to keep them as pets. Um, they are kind of interesting. They, they don't have a very long life cycle, um, but they do make a pretty cool they do make a pretty cool chrysalis. Here are some, some chrysalis of, of different kinds of caterpillars that are formed underground. They burrow underground and make this. This would be a smaller one. This would be a larger one. And this one is the one from the tobacco or, to, or the um, tomato hornworm. So you can see it's got this weird little loop on it. Its antennas are in a, a different little part. It does that every time. Um, these pupas are really cool when you look at the at the face of them you can see it almost like a little mummy you can see where their their wings are all wrapped around um, these did not make it the ground got too dry where these were and so they they did not survive and so when people were planting and digging they came across these so if you see one with that little thing there it looks like an alien that is your your green tomato hornworm if it gets to finish its life cycle then it will become a moth and a lot of people think that it's going to become hummingbird moths um, hummingbird moths are in this same family but these guys are not going to become a hummingbird moth what you're going to see is a carolina sphinx moth or a five spotted hawk moth this is the tobacco worm and this one is from the tomato worm very similar and you can see the shadow here is showing the actual size when they land, they, they bring their wings down like a paper airplane there. And so, so these two are what you're going to see on the bark of trees where they blend in well or around your light at night. You're not going to see a hummingbird moth from these guys. One of my favorite things, though, is the caterpillar poop called frass. And I think it looks like little grenades. Um, if you look on the internet, you will see some people posting pictures of this and thinking that it's the caterpillar eggs. It's not. Um, this is poop. And uh, some of these are larger. Some of these are smaller, depending on the size of, of the worm. And um, they have a neat texture to them, I think, um, if you can be fascinated by caterpillar poop. But if you have a, a little sprig of tomato plant in your house in a vase and you put one of these worms on there and you just watch them, you can hear them eat. They're fascinating to watch and they make a large number of these poops. Um, something my sixth graders enjoy hearing is that it is called frass. It is a name, not, not all manure has a, or excrement has a special name, but frass is only from caterpillars, just like guano is only from bats. Um, but we like to say in sixth grade that the frass comes out of the frass hole of the caterpillar. We just get a kick out of that.